This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on Atmospheric Science Playlist and it's looking at the Hadley cell as our initiating engine for the tropospheric convection currents. But in this video, we'll look at in more detail the cells adjacent to the Hadley cell, which is the feral cell in the mid-latitudes and the polar cells obviously over the polar regions between 60 and 90 degrees north and south of the equator. So if we expand this system, we have the initial catalyst or engine for our global circulation model or GCM for the entire planet in the troposphere. You have the Hadley cell, two of them symmetrical either side of the equator, being formed by convection cells for hot air rising and cold air sinking. Now it rises over the equator, which is zero degrees, and it sinks over 30 degrees south and north thus creating the first complete cell. Now I have drawn this arrow that is then leading off towards 60 south and this arrow leading over towards 60 north. Now this is the initiation of a second cell that is next to the Hadley. So if we carry this on, we have the air that's going to move across the surface, the wind, and it's going to rise at 60 south it's going to rise up again towards the pores. And again, same situation happens. Like the equator, it can't go any higher because it's too cold. And it's going to be moved, meet and collide and converge with this other part of the Hadley cell. And rather than going forward, because it can't go forward or higher, it has to go down, cold, and it's going to sink and rejoin. And this is called the feral cell that's next to the Hadley cell. So we can do the same thing over here on the northern hemisphere. The wind approaches 60 north, it's going to rise up, it's going to rise up towards the pores, it's going to split, and it's going to split over here in the southern hemisphere as well. And it's going to rejoin the Hadley cell here at 30 degrees north and sink because it's very cold, and we have our feral cell over here. So we have our symmetrical cells forming because of air that's either being heated and rising, or it's cold with less heat and it's going to sink. And there's a final cell between 60 south and 60 north and 90 north and 90 south. And this is the polar cell. So we're going to have this situation where the air is going to sink again. It's very, very cold. And it's going to sink down towards or over 90 south. It's going to come back around across the surface as wind and rejoin at 60 and rise up. So we have a rise in section right here over 60 and it's going to sink down. It's very cold air is going to sink over 90 south, which is the South Pole, Antarctica. And the same thing is going to happen over here in the Northern Hemisphere. So it's going to sink down very cold over 90 north. It's going to sink and it's going to hit the surface and be pushed back and rejoin at 60 north, which is going to rise up. And we have our polar cell in the Northern Hemisphere polar cell in the southern hemisphere. So again, we have a symmetrical set of three cells, Hadley, Feral, Polar. So the simple heating and cooling of air in the troposphere from the equator, because the equator is heated more than the poles, and you have this differential heating, you have these three symmetrical convective cells that form in the troposphere called the Hadley, which is around the equator, the feral in the mid-latitudes, and the polar, obviously in the polar regions, that form to move heat. And that requires air. It's going to carry the heat in the form of wind. And wind can be across the surface or can be up by the pores. And you have this rising air and sinking air based on density. And whether it's being forced up or encouraged up with heat to create these three cells over the Earth's surface. Now, the reason why the pores is there and it's kind of like a dividing area between the troposphere and stratosphere is because the cold air towards the pores is very, very cold and cold air cannot rise. So that's like an unofficial boundary that's separating the troposphere from the stratosphere. I add in the surface winds and also the upper level winds. So these lateral arrows that represent the wind in between the cells that connect the rising air with the sinking air. And what happens is the difference in temperature will cause the air to rise or sink, which will then turn cause the area to have either a low or a high pressure. Now, the 
wind is air moving between pressure zones. Now, the high pressure is going to move the air away, and the low pressure will drag or suck in the air towards it. So there is a balance between low and high pressure, which is causing air to move between the areas of pressure caused by temperature difference. And this wind is what we experience on the surface, which is like the trade winds or the easterlies or westerlies. So this will be in the next video, but this is the Hadley, Ferrell, and Polar Cell, which is our GCM, which is our general circulation model. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.